Looking at the Math 2 Unit 6 review. So our first problem, we have 8 over 14 equals x over 35. We can do cross product, which is going to be 8 times 35 equals 14x. 8 times 35 gives us 280 equals 14x. We then divide 280 by 14, and we get x is 20. For number two, we could do uh, cross product again. 3 times 45 equals 5 times x plus 10. This comes out to be 135 equals 5x plus 50. Subtract 50 over, we get 85 equals 5x. x comes out to be 17. All right, number three, what makes the proportion true? So we got KQ over KL. KQ is the whole side, KL is the top piece. So on the other side, we're going to do the, the whole piece over the top piece. The whole piece is KP over KM. So we go with KP as our answer. For number four, which proportion is accurate for the diagram shown? DH over CK. DH is the top piece over the whole thing. CK is top over bottom. So that one is out. DH is top over the whole thing, and then that would be KC is bottom over top, that's out. DH is top over whole thing. C over C plus K is top over whole thing, because that is C plus K here. So that one looks like it works. This last one is the same idea, but subtraction, so that one is out. So C is our best answer because it is the top piece of this line over the whole side is equal to the top piece, C, over the whole side, C plus K. For number five, we have a six-foot boy has a shadow that's six feet. A uh, shadow of a tree is also 24 feet. We're solving for the height. So a ratio for the heights is six over X. A ratio for the shadows is four over 24. Now these six and the four both came from the boy. The tree had the X and the 24. Those are both either on the top or either on the bottom. Uh, we could reduce. 4 over 24 comes out to be 1 sixth, so x equals 36 feet. For number 6, we should have they are similar. We need angle B. Angle B is going to be corresponding to J, so angle B is 100 degrees. Uh, angle L is corresponding to C. Well, if I know this is 100 and these two together is 125, if we subtract that from 180, angle L is 55 degrees. Last part, they want the scale factor from the smaller to the larger, so we go 18 over 22, which we always reduce, and it comes out to be 9 over 11 is our scale factor. Number 7, we have they are similar. We're going to calculate angle A. A is corresponding to W, so that is 85. Angle P is corresponding to the second letter, so that's be B, that's 120 degrees. For 8 through 10, we're going to see um, complete the similarity statement and then say how they are similar. So in the first one, I have this angle L they both have, that's the big angle and the small angle. And then if I look at sides, I could do 9 over 15, which is the whole side, is equal to 18, small piece, over 30. And I need to make sure those are equal to each other. Well, this one reduces to be 9 over 15, and I can see they match there. If we went a little bit further, we can make it 3 over 5. 3 over 5 is important because it is the scale factor. So they are similar. So we'd say TLZ is similar to CLH, and they are similar by side, angle, side. For number 9, we have vertical angles here, 42 and 42. What we really need to check is if this angle is 88 degrees. So 42 plus 70 is 112. 112 from 180 is 68 degrees. That does not match, so these two don't work. This one will not be 70, so this is going to be not similar. We needed two angles, or really all three angles to match. It did not in this case. A couple values different. It, we could see though it might have worked. Uh, last one here, I have vertical angles. 
I also have alternate interior, and I know I only need um, two angles for angle angle, but I actually have all three, so you could really state any of the uh, two of the three. So it is angle angle, and we would say that RQS is similar to UTS. For number 11, we need to solve here. So I know 6 and 18 is a ratio, 5 and y, and 4 and x. And if I look, 6, 5, and 4 all come from the same triangle. They're all top values. 18, y, and x are all bottom. I'm going to reduce and make this 1 third, and then I can solve each one. If I do that, 1 third equals 5 over y becomes y equals 15. And then take that over, 1 third equals 4 over x, and x comes out to be 12. For number 12, I would draw the two triangles separately just to make sure we get things labeled correctly. So I have y, 36, and 18 is the small triangle. The big triangle, we have 9 plus y, x, and that looks like 48. So now it's actually y over 9 plus y equals 36 over 48 equals 18 over x. Now the one we want to use is the 36 over 48, which is actually just 3 fourths. So I'm going to take 3 fourths and set that equal to 18 over x. This gives me 72 equals 3x and x is 24. And then I take the 3 fourths with the y over 9 plus y. That gives me 3 times 9 plus y equals 4y. 27 plus 3y equals 4y, and 27 equals y when I solve that one. The key thing is, is you got to separate the triangle so we label correctly. We don't want to mix up values because when we talk about the whole side of the big triangle, we want to have 9 plus y and 48 as those values, not 9 and 12. Now 13, though, is the side splitter. It doesn't use these sides like this previous one did. So this one, we could actually go 15 over 5 equals 27 over x. 15 over 5 is 3 over 1. So then we get 27 equals 3x by cross product, and x is 9. Now that's different than 14. Notice how this one didn't use these parallel sides. This one does. I'm going to go small triangle is 5 and 7 big triangle is 15 and x. So now it's x over 7 equals 15 over 5, making sure parts from the same triangles are in the same parts of the fraction. So I get uh, x over 7 equals 3 over 1, and I get x is 21. Last one here. I'm going to make this into a side splitter. So this is 9 because it adds to 12, and this would be uh, 8 minus x. So I could go x over 8 minus x equals 9 over 3, which is x over 8 minus x equals 3 over 1. So this comes out with cross product to be x equals 3 times 8 minus x, which becomes 4x equals 24, or x is 6. Another way we could solve this is if we just treated it as the top piece over the whole thing. So top piece over 8, x over 8, equals 9 over 12. And doing that, uh, 9 over 12 is 3 fourths. We get 24 equals 4x, and x is 6 also. Another way we could get to it. So it just really depends how you see it. As long as things are going in the right place, you're going to be fine. For 16, I'm going to go 8 over 6 equals x minus 4 over 9. I'm going to reduce and make that 4 thirds on the left side. So I get 36 from 9 times 4 and 3 times x minus 4. That becomes 3x minus 12. 48 equals 3x and x is 16. For number 17, we're going to go 21 over 14 equals x plus 8 over x. This becomes 3 over 2. So we have 3x equals 2 times x plus 8. That's 2x plus 16, which becomes x equals 16. Also, for number 18, I'm going to stack these and go 9 over x equals 12 over 8. 
You could have also done 9 over 12 equals x over 8. It's really how you want to set it up. In either case, though, they come out to be 9 times 8 equals 12x. As long as you get to that cross product, you're in good shape. That's 72 equals 12x, and x comes out to be 6. Now this 19, we got to be careful because if we took it like this one, 20 is not the value we want. We want to do 20 minus x. So I'm going to go 14 over x equals 18 over 20 minus x. You don't want to use 20 there. 20 will throw you off. So now it's 14 times 20 minus x equals 18x. 14 times 20 is 280 minus 14x equals 18x. 280 equals to be 32x. And that becomes 280 over 32, which is a decimal is 8.75. If we wanted to reduce, we could divide them, looks like, both by 4. We'd get 70 over 8 be 35 over 4, which then comes out to be 8.75 as well. Now we shift to dilations. Number 20, a student dilates the figure at the right using the center of dilation 0, 0 and a scale factor of 2. Which statement is going to be true? So each angle of the dilated house will be similar but not congruent to the original house. Okay. Each line segment will be parallel to its corresponding line segment. Okay. Some of the line segments may have different slopes. We could look at that. And the distance between the vertices will be four times the distance between the vertices of the original. So let's look. Let's, let's make it a scale factor of two. So the problem with that is these going to get very big. Um, this one's going to go to here. Uh, the rest of them are actually off the screen. But we can actually see when we take these points. Let's go 1, 1. Uh, and to be 5, 1, and apply a scale factor of 2. These come out to be our new points. Now, this is now 8 units. This is now 4 units. I also have this kind of side drawn. It just kind of went off. Now, I have some things I see here. These two are both parallel to each other. The vertical lines are both parallel to each other. So if we did a dilation, we have the line segments will be parallel to the corresponding line segment of the original house. So that we know works. Now some of the line segments of the dilated house may have different slopes. But if they're parallel, they're going to have the same slopes. So we know that one doesn't work. The distance between the vertices of the line segment and the dilated house will be four times the distance between the vertices of the original. So I know this one is 2, 2, and this one was 1, 1. Well, it was kind of over 1, up 1. This is now over 2, up 2. So it's actually not 4 times. It's 2 times. So that one's out. Brings us to A. Each angle of the dilated house will be similar. Angles are not similar. Angles are congruent. So anytime we have similarity, angles stay congruent. It's the sides that are proportional. So that one's wrong. So parallel is what we want to go with. For number 21, consider the triangles shown on the right. Describe the transformations that we have. So uh, if I look from A to B, I need to move this point and get it down here. So it's looking like all of them move 3 to the right and then down. So if I move 3 to the right, it would look like that. And then I go down four units. So if this went down four, it would take me to here. And then I do a scale factor of two, notice they all have that, and make it twice as big. Well right here I have points zero, negative one, zero, negative three, and negative three, negative three. A scale factor of two would double all of them. And it actually looks like it matches to where I want to go. So if I go 3 to the right, down 4, and a scale factor of 2, I get a similar triangle. So that one will be right here. 
Translate, three to the right, four down, dilate, scale factor of two, center of zero, zero, the triangles are similar. It will match. The nice thing about a multiple choice is we kind of work through the options. We can actually test everyone to see, but C is our best bet. Okay, graph the figure represented by dilation, a scale factor of 1.5. So our points here are negative two, negative two. Looks like four, negative two, and one, three, positive three. So a scale factor of 1.5. So that gives us negative three, negative three. Six, negative three. 1.5, 4.5. So we go here. Oops, 6, negative 3 when you go down. And 1.5, 4.5, it's about there. So if we draw our triangles, so there's our new one. Uh, should they be similar? Yes. Now, should the corresponding sides be parallel? In this case, the angles stayed the same, so they are going to be parallel as well. And we could count the slopes. They, they do work. Uh, an example of that is these are both still horizontal lines, so they are parallel. Should the sides be congruent? That is a no. The sides are proportional. It means if we set up fractions, we'll have proportions. Um, corresponding angles congruent, that is yes. So in our definition of similarity, sides are proportional, angles are congruent. Okay, last set, always true, sometimes true, and never true. Congruent figures are similar, similar figures. That is true. Congruent figures are similar, similar figures with a scale factor of one. Now, similar figures are congruent figures is sometimes true. That's when they actually have a scale factor of one. They don't have to have that, though. The length of a two-unit segment dilated by a scale factor of five is seven units. That is not true. A two unit segment dilated by a scale factor of five will be a seven unit, or not seven, a 10 unit segment because you're multiplying. Uh, a dilation takes a line not passing through the center of dilation to a parallel line. That is true. Uh, we can look up here at this problem. This line and this line turned out to be parallel. A dilation takes a line passing through the center of our dilation and translates it up by the scale factor. That is not true because if it was going through the center and we dilated it, it would just make it larger on that. It would actually stay on the line. It would not translate at all. It's the same line, just larger. Not larger, but goes a longer distance if it's a segment. Uh, the sim there is a similarity transformation between two rectangles. That is sometimes true. That is only if they're similar. So if you have two rectangles that are similar, that works. But if you have two rectangles that clearly are not the same shape and different sizes, these would not work. These, okay, they, it's possible they could be similar. Uh, there is a similarity transformation between two circles. That is always true. Circles are always similar. Any two circles are similar. And triangle dilations can be proved similar by angle-angle similarity postulate. That one we can say is true because the angles we'll preserve will have the angle length um, in the dilations. So we'll go always true for that one.